Hey friends, it's your boy SVH coming at you with today's bowl of sake by Hazrat Nayak Khan for August 14th. In the country you see the glory of God. In the city you glorify his name. So this one really alludes to uh, kind of the same thing as yesterday where uh, the lover of nature really sees the holy book uh, and that nature really is the only holy book and that uh, it, it's through nature and through um, through the beauty of creation, the beauty of God's creation, that we really see His glory. Um, so I think He's alluding here to the country, to you know the the wood, the woods, the forest, um, the countryside, um, some place away from the city. And uh, in the country, you see the glory of God. In the city, you glorify His name. So it's in this uh, this place of dwelling where where everyone lives and, and everyone does their work and has their business and things like that, that uh, you glorify the name of God and uh, really exemplify what it is that you saw in, in that glory of God in the country or the, the experience that you had um, outside of the city and things like that. And um, there's a little bit of a story here about a trip that, uh, that Anayat Khan and his father made. And uh, yeah, I'll share that with you now here. From Sagoli, where the train journey ends, Anayat and his father had six days' journey through the forest. There was a new, this was a new experience to a soul who wanted to breathe a breath of freedom from the crowd and to whom nature was not only appealing but uplifting. Anayat's enjoyment was boundless. For the first time in his life, there came to him the realiz realization of the saying, The city was made by man and the country was made by God. The solitude of the forest, the sounds of the birds that one never feels nor hears in the crowd, the trees standing in stillness for hundreds of years, a place never occupied by man, gave him a feeling of that calm and peace that every soul longs for, consciously or unconsciously. This journey was a kind of answer to the cry of his soul. He felt in the sphere a welcome and blessing given by the long-standing trees, venerable in age and appearance. He saw the hand of God blessing in every bending branch. He pictured his hands in the branches that stretched upwards, hands constantly praying and asking for blessing from above. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's in the realm of nature that you can really experience uh, peace and tranquility um, you also get a recharge there's no radio frequencies EMFs there's no Alexa or Siri well if you got your phone I'm sure there's Siri uh, things like that but you but when you when you get away from all of that um, all of that energy and all that chaos um, and get to a place where there's stillness and silence that stillness and silence is palpable and, and to some people it's uncomfortable um, some people can't handle it <laughs> because they're so used to the chaos they're used to the jarringness of life uh, but when you're when you get to break away from that and you get out into a place where you can experience just the peace and the calm that uh, that can really impact your life in a very meaningful way it can actually retune you it, it can retune your 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 body it can re uh, align your cells um, it, it really regenerates, you know, your being. And so um, I think this is really what Mershid alludes to in this one. You know, uh, it's a really simple one today. Uh, not, not a whole lot of deep uh, thought that you can, uh, that you need to pull out of it. But uh, just that understanding that uh, sometimes breaking away and uh, being out of the city and being in a place where um, you can just kind of be at peace with the stillness um, or the beauty or the, the, the sounds of nature even, you know, I say stillness, but you know, there, there is a peacefulness too, to the birds singing, animals, you know, foraging through the forest and things like that. Um, you know, the rustling of, of the wind and things like that. These, these are all things that, um, really get overshadowed when you're, when you're in the city, uh, or you're in a place where there's so much noise and chaos and things going on. And, and, and again, these, these, um, these bowls of sake, these, these teachings were given a hundred years ago and, um, you know, very relevant to today. But even today, even more chaos, even more noise, even more distraction, more things to take the soul away from its true nature, 
which is peace and uh, tranquility. And so um, I do encourage everybody to take some time for yourself and, uh, you know, get out of the house, go somewhere um, peaceful, whether it's a, a little park down the street or some quiet place where you can go and just sit and observe nature for a little bit. Just, you know, even if something as simple as sitting by a sidewalk and watching the ants go by. Um, it, it's a pretty amazing experience when you really get yourself out of your head and out of your daily life and your daily experience to be somewhere um, where there's peace and calm and um, where there's a natural order to things, uh, where things work as they're supposed to work in tune with each other. Uh, and there, there is that in tuneness also in nature that uh, we don't get in a lot of other places. So, yeah. Just a couple thoughts on today's bolasaki, and I will be back at you again tomorrow with another.